The 1976 Tongshan earthquake, also known as Great Tongshan Earthquake, was a natural disaster resulting from a magnitude 7.6 earthquake that hit the region around Tongshan, Hebei, People's Republic of China on July 28, 1976, at 3.42 in the morning. In minutes the city of Tongshan, an industrial city with approximately one million inhabitants, ceased to exist. 85% of the buildings in the city collapsed or were unusable, all services failed, and most of the highway and railway bridges collapsed or were seriously damaged. At least 242,000 people died some have said three times that, making this the third, or possibly second, deadliest earthquake in recorded history. Tongshan was the most notable of several disasters in 1976, which in Chinese tradition might signal that the government had lost political legitimacy. The Tongshan earthquake also came without warning, undermining a key tenet of Maoist ideology, that earthquakes could be predicted. Nonetheless, the government's response showed that it was prepared and competent to quickly provide relief. Topic: The earthquakes. The Tongshan earthquake was complex, with multiple events. There were two main shocks. The first struck at 3 hours 42 minutes and 56 seconds in the morning, local time, approximately 12 kilometers under the southern part of Tongshan. The magnitude was initially estimated at around 8.1, subsequently recalculated to be 7.6 on the standard MW scale. However, that scale measures only the total energy released by an earthquake, and earthquakes vary in how much of that energy is converted to seismic shaking. The Tongshan quake, being relatively shallow, converted much of its energy to surface shaking, and on the MIS surface magnitude scale it also measured 7.6, 7.8 on the Chinese surface magnitude scale. This occurred on a near vertical right lateral strike slip fault, striking N40 degrees east. The block on the southeast side sliding about 3 meters to the southwest. This resulted from tectonic compression on a nearly west-east axis. Surface rupturing occurred in five and echelon segments extending 8 kilometers through the center of Tongshan. The second main shock, with a magnitude 7.0 MW, or 7.4 megaseconds, struck that afternoon at 1845 near Luangxian, about 70 kilometers to the east-northeast. B. On the intensity map in the next section, just south of the northeastern end of the Tongshan Fault. This occurred in a zone of north-northwest striking conjugate faults that cut across the north end of the Tongshan Fault. The left lateral motion here, along with the right lateral motion on the Tongshan Fault, suggests that as the crustal blocks to the west and east are compressed together the block between these two earthquakes is being squeezed out to the south. A long sequence of aftershocks followed, with 12 of magnitude 6 or greater. The first of these struck just three and a half hours after the initial shock, at 7.17, at the southern end of Tongshan Fault, near Ninj. C. On the map below, with a magnitude of 6.2 megaseconds. Another significant aftershock, MIS 6.9, occurred in November near Ninj. Most aftershocks occurred between these end points, in a zone 140 km long and about 50 km wide. Many buildings were further damaged by the aftershocks. Topic. Damage. 
The damage done by an earthquake depends primarily on two factors. First, the intensity of shaking, which depends mainly on the magnitude of the earthquake rupture, the distance from the epicenter, and the nature of the local soil and topography, with soft soils e.g., sediments and fill more likely to amplify the intensity and duration of the shaking. Second, the design and construction of the structures being shaken, with houses built of adobe or stone, wooden houses without a well-built frame, and unreinforced masonry construction being especially vulnerable. The seismic risk had been greatly underestimated and almost all buildings and structures were designed and built without seismic considerations. As a result, Tongshan was mainly a city of unreinforced brick buildings, sitting right on top of a major earthquake. The power magnitude of the Tongshan earthquake is indicated by the extent of where it was felt, up to 1,100 kilometers 680 miles away, across most of northeastern China, and even in Mongolia and Korea. In and around Beijing, 140 kilometers (87 miles) from the epicenter, the shaking reached an intensity of V on the Chinese intensity scale, similar to the modified Mercalli intensity scale, with nearly 10% of all buildings damaged and at least 50 people died. The economic loss totaled to 10 billion yuan. Topic. Intensity 11 and X zone The rupture occurred under the southern part of the city, and propagated northeastward on a fault that runs through the middle of the city. The maximum intensity was 11, 11 on the 12-degree Chinese scale. Nearly every building and structure in the city collapsed, wholly or partially, infrastructure was severely damaged, and essential services such as electric power, water supply, and communications were entirely knocked out. This area of maximum damage, the mesoseismal area, was approximately 10.5 kilometers (6.5 miles) long and from 3.5 to 5.5 kilometers wide, centered roughly along the railway. The area of intensity X shaking, where only new, one-story brick buildings were merely damaged or slightly damaged. The rest being severely damaged or worse, was 36 km long and 15 km across. In this high intensity zone, intensity X and 11, within the red contour on the map, 20 highway bridges and 5 railway bridges cross the Duhe River in Tongshan, only 6 survived with only minor damage. Topic. Intensity X and 8 zone Shaking of intensity X or greater occurred in a zone roughly 78 km 48 miles long and 42 km 26 miles about 1,800 square kilometers inner orange contour on the map, and also around the aftershocks at Luangxian and Ninh. In this zone most buildings classified as Class III well-built buildings of wood, masonry, or reinforced concrete survived, but many Class II buildings typically old wood frame buildings lacking a well-built frame, and quite common outside of the cities were destroyed, while a majority of Class I buildings built of adobe or stone were destroyed. Further out to the outer orange contour, and around the city of Tianjin and a few isolated patches, intensity 8 shaking mostly affected class 1 buildings more than half destroyed, bridges, and tall brick chimneys. Railway track was also subject to bending or displacement, depending on soil conditions. <laughs> <laughs> 
Topic: Intensity 7 zone. The zone of intensity 7 shaking inside the dark brown contour marks the extent of moderate damage where many class 1 structures of weak design or construction were damaged but only few between 10% and 30% were destroyed and only a few class 2 buildings damaged this ellipsoid zone extended about 75 km north and south of Tongshan and 120 km east and west, from about 25 km short of Beijing to short of Qinhuangdao City which had anomalously higher shaking, and from the Sea of Bohai in the south and southwest to just north of Zunhua. The north-south shortening of this zone is attributed to buttressing by the bedrock of the Yenshin Mountains. Significant damage occurred beyond this in the V zone, but, like in Beijing, affected less than 10% of the buildings, or occurred in small localized areas. Topic. Coal mines. Mining coal is Tongshan's principal industry, and when the quake struck around 10,000 miners were underground. For the most part the mine roadways tunnels were not seriously damaged, but with the loss of electrical power there was no illumination, aside from headlamps, no ventilation, and no working lifts. It is reported that most miners escaped within hours, but that some did not reach the surface until two weeks later. Most of the damage to the vertical shafts occurred within the first 50 meters, where they pass through the water bearing alluvium. In many cases, the concrete liner built to keep out the water cracked, particularly where not built properly, allowing a much greater inflow of water. Coupled with damage to the underground drainage system and lack of power to drive the pumps, many of the various mines flooded, some electrical power to the mines was restored in three days, and some coal production resumed within ten days. However, dewatering, overhauling of flooded electrical equipment, and rebuilding of surface buildings and structures continued for a year and a half. The pre earthquake level of production was not reached until the end of 1977. Topic. Railways The Beijing Shanhaiguan Railway, built in 1887, is a double track class 1 trunk line that runs from Beijing southeast to Tianjin and Tonggu, then turns northeast to cross the Yangdingxin River and its estuary to run to Ninj and then Tongshan. From Tongshan it continues northeast and then east to Chengli, and then to Qinhuangdao and Shanhaiguan. This is the principal connection of Beijing, Tianjin, and Tongshan to the seaports, and to northeast China. The Tongxian to Tuoatu within modern-day Luan County Railway, built in 1976, is a single-track class 1 trunk line that runs east from the eastern outskirts of Beijing to where it meets the Beijing to Shanhaiguan line northeast of Tongshan, near the epicenter of the M7.1 quake. All of this was built with no consideration for earthquake-resistant design. Although some earthquake resistance measures for large and medium bridges were applied following the 1975 Haichung earthquake. These vital arteries and other railways and branch lines were seriously damaged by the earthquakes, mainly in the areas of intensity X or greater shaking. This includes a large area around Tongshan quake, 
and areas around Ninh and Luangxian following the M6.9 and M7.4 aftershocks. At the time of the main quake, there were 28 freight trains and seven passenger trains traveling on the Beijing Shanghaiguan Line in the affected area. Seven freight trains and two passenger trains derailed due to derangement of the rails, mostly south of Tongshan, where the line was built on loose alluvium, diluvium, and occasional stretches of loose sand. In many of these cases, and also similar cases northeast of Tongshan, and on the Tongshan Tuotu line east of Fengrun, the railway embankment slumped due to weak soils. In other cases the embankment held, but transverse compression of the rails caused them to buckle. Railway operations were further impaired by the loss of communications including signaling and water supply for the steam locomotives, in both cases due mainly to collapse of buildings and loss of electrical power. However, the most serious damage, taking the most manpower and longest time to repair, was that involving bridges. Most difficult was where soft or liquefied soil allowed the bank to slide into the river, shifting the abutments. A more frequent problem was where an approach embankment subsided, typically leaving the rails suspended from the abutment. There were numerous cases where concrete piers and abutments were damaged due to inadequate design and construction. Bridges that were strengthened following the Haichung earthquake survived with only slight damage. It was observed that at intensity 7 and above damage to the roadbed was correlated mainly with loose soil and a high water table. Conversely, bridges and rails in Tongshan City, built on dense soil with a deep water table, were largely undamaged even though subject to intensity 11 shaking. Over 42,000 people were mobilized to quickly effect emergency repair of the railways. The Tongxian Tuotu line was opened for traffic on August 3, single track of the Beijing Shanhaiguan line opened on August 7, and both tracks on August 10, albeit at restricted speeds over temporary bridges and at other places where repairs were not yet complete. Topic. Death toll Estimates of the number of deaths due to the Tongshan earthquake have varied widely, and generally lack a clear authoritative basis. <laughs> Early reports One of the earliest reports outside of China came on the 28th from the International Tsunami Information Center, reporting that a violent earthquake, initially estimated at about magnitude 8.1, had struck in the vicinity of Peking, Beijing. Center director Dr. George Pararas Karayanis was reported as saying that if the quake hit in a populated area reports of considerable damage could be expected. News reports the next day located the quake about 100 miles southeast of Peking and 63 miles northeast of Tianjin. Tianjin, i.e. almost precisely in Tongshan. The Chinese Communist Party's Central Committee also broadcast a statement that the quake caused great losses to people's life and property. One of the first reports from Tongshan said, Nearly every building in the city was flattened. There were several reports of 50 people killed in Beijing, a hundred miles from the epicenter. According to author Stephen Spignessi, a couple of days 
After the quake Dr. Pararas Karayanis gave United Press International UPI an estimate of 700,000 to 750,000 deaths, based on a similar-sized earthquake in Shaanxi Province in 1556 that caused 830,000 deaths. Pararas Karayanis' current web page says only that it was fairly accurately estimated that there were at least 655,000 people dead." Without mentioning by whom or on what basis this estimate was made. In August the nationalist Chinese government in Taiwan announced that, according to their agents in China, the death toll was over 100,000, with about 900,000 injured. They also reported that, "...almost all buildings in Tongshan were leveled," and 80% of homes and buildings in Tianjin, "...suffered damage to some extent." The following January 1977, the Nationalists released a document they said had been presented at an emergency conference on relief work the previous August by the Hopa Provincial Committee of the Party and the Hopa Revolutionary Committee. According to this document, in such seriously stricken areas as Tongshan Municipality, and Fengnan and Feng Yun, there were 655,237 persons dead. Some 79,000 persons were seriously injured, and some 700,000 persons suffered various degrees of injuries. Though these figures have been widely cited, it does not appear there has ever been inquiry into how they were derived, of whether they were an initial estimate made in the first few days following the quake, or had a more solid basis. In following June it was reported that the Chinese authorities had briefed seismologist Sina Lomnitz about Tongshan. It was noted that though no figures were provided, they did not deny any published estimates. Topic: Official figures. A 1988 book by several members of the Chinese State Seismological Bureau states that 242,419 people died in the quake, which reflects the official figure reported by the state-run Xinhua News Agency. A webpage of the Chinese Earthquake Administration dated 2009 also attributes. 242,769 deaths and 164,851 serious injuries to the Tongshan quake based on an early 1982 study there are various reports that the official death toll was later given by the Chinese government as 275,000 without specifying a source. As of 2017, the Tongshan Earthquake Memorial Wall contained the names of 246,465 victims, who were registered by relatives. Topic. Political aspects The remarkably low death toll of the Haichung earthquake the previous year, initially said to be fewer than 300, much later estimated at a still very modest 2041, had been credited to measures taken in response to an accurate and timely prediction. This was touted as demonstrating the validity of the Chinese methods of earthquake prediction, including inspiration from Mao Zedong thought, and the superiority of our country's socialist system, with China in the midst of the Cultural Revolution. Belief in earthquake prediction was made an element of ideological orthodoxy that distinguished the true party liners from right-wing deviationists. 
and it was everyone's duty to criticize those who doubted the feasibility of earthquake prediction. However, the complete lack of warning and hundredfold greater death toll at Tongshan stood in stark contrast to Haicheng. It was a palpable failure of earthquake prediction that undermined the claims of superiority made for Chinese methods and the socialist system. As a backdrop to this, and of deep concern to the Chinese Communist Party, was a collectively recognized but unvoiced awareness that in traditional Chinese belief, natural disasters are considered disruptions in the natural order of heaven tn and may signify the loss of legitimacy the mandate of heaven of the current government this view was underlined by a magnitude 6.7 earthquake in southwestern china just three weeks later on the other hand, an ongoing mass education campaign before the quake showed that the government was aware and concerned, and the prompt and massive response following the quake demonstrated the government's competence to alleviate suffering and restore normal production, drawing on resources from across the nation. This was contrasted with the hardships faced by disaster victims, especially the poor, under previous regimes, where assistance was lacking. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Geology. Tongshan lies at the northern edge of the Beijing Tianjin Tongshan Plain, an alluvial plain that stretches from Beijing to the Sea of Bohai. This plain, the northeastern corner of the Great North China Plain, is where sediments eroded from the Yanshan Mountains to the north have filled in the ancient Sea of Bohai, with Tongshan near where the shore was about 4,000 years ago. To the south these sediments have formed a layer of weak soils as much as 3 km thick. At Tongshan and northward these sediments are thinner where the underlying strata crops out to form isolated hills. This underlying strata is a thick typically 10 km layer of mainly sedimentary strata such as limestone and sandstone, with large deposits of coal. Tongshan is located particularly over a northeast-oriented syncline, a fold in the sedimentary strata that has brought massive deposits of coal close enough to the surface to be mined. In this area the overlying alluvium varies in thickness from several meters to around 600 meters 2,000 feet. Underlying all this is the ancient bedrock of different kinds of metamorphic rock such as schist, gneiss, quartz, granulite, etc. that form the eastern block of the North China Craton. This craton was formed approximately 2 billion years ago by the collision of two major crustal blocks that left a belt of uplifted mountains, the Central Orogenic Belt Cobb, that crosses China approximately southwest to northeast, passing just west and north of Beijing. Just north of Zunhua another orogenic belt, the east-west trending Yanshan mountain fault fold belt also known as the Yanshan seismic belt marks the northern edge of the North China Craton, and of the alluvial plain. It is also the location of over half of the destructive earthquakes in Hebei province, as under the plain several fault zones oriented parallel to the central orogenic belt terminate against the Yanshan Mountains. Many of these faults are ancient, but have been reactivated by the force transmitted from the collision of the Indian Plate against the Eurasian Plate, making the eastern bloc unusually active seismically, accounting for six of the ten deadliest earthquakes in recorded history. The Tongshan Fault that ruptured 28 July runs right under the center of Tongshan City. One of three faults in the Changdong Fault Zone, it runs approximately east-northeast about 36 km to where it terminates against the north-south trending fault where, just to the south, the secondary M7.1 quake occurred. B. On the map. 
The southern end of the Tongshan Fault it bends slightly at Tongshan is near Ninh, which was also the site of a M6.2 earthquake several hours after the main shock, and an M6.9 quake. C. The following November. The Tongshan Fault is considered shallow, but corresponds with a deeper and younger fault with somewhat differing characteristics. Topic. Question of prediction Whether the Tongshan earthquake was predicted has had considerable political as well as seismological significance. The 1975 Haichung earthquake, about 400 kilometers (250 miles) northeast of Tongshan, was widely hailed as the first and, by mainstream seismologists, the only successful prediction of a major earthquake, demonstrating both that earthquakes could be predicted and that the Chinese were successfully doing so. The surprisingly light death toll Initial reports were of very few people killed, but later determined to be a modest 2041. For this magnitude MIS 7.5 quake, attributed to the precautionary measures taken following a definite short-term prediction, was proclaimed as a demonstration of the superiority of China's socialist system, and incidentally a validation of the Chinese methodologies. However, it was later determined that the most important factor in anticipating the Haichung earthquake was the extended series of significant foreshocks, powerful messages from nature, and the low casualty rate was due largely to the time of day, hitting in the early evening when most people were neither at work nor asleep. Tongshan was not so fortunate. Seventeen months later the 242,419 fatalities of the similarly sized Tongshan earthquake was therefore a considerable shock politically as well as seismically. While some of this greater mortality might be attributed to the exposure of a larger population, or the time of day Haichung was struck in the early evening, Tongshan while most people were asleep, the principal factor appeared to be the failure to take any precautionary measures. Tongshan was entirely unprepared. At the time, the Chinese methods of earthquake prediction mainly consisted of watching for various precursors, including foreshocks, and were celebrated for their success at Haichung and elsewhere. Many seismologists consider the Tongshan earthquakes to have not been predicted, even famously unpredicted, and that it was not predictable due to a lack of precursory anomalous phenomena. Furthermore, an investigation 30 years later found that there was no official short-term prediction of an imminent earthquake at Haichung, and that, though there were many unofficial predictions of an imminent quake, none of those had a scientific basis. The warnings that were made and precautions taken happened largely at the local level, based on general middle-term predictions, enhanced public awareness due to an educational campaign, and a series of foreshocks. It is significant that at Tongshan there were no perceptible foreshocks. On the other hand, it is reported that several people at the State Seismological Bureau SSB wanted to warn of an impending earthquake somewhere in the region between Beijing and the Bohai Sea, and that this was discussed at several meetings. One of these was a week-long national conference on earthquake predictions and preparation that convened in Tongshan on July 14, two weeks before the earthquake, where Wang Chengman is said to have warned there could be a magnitude 5-plus earthquake in the Tongshan Luangxian area between July 22 and August 5. 
However, in addition to the distractions of the Cultural Revolution, there was a possible disagreement within the SSB on whether the next large earthquake would be in eastern China i.e., Beijing area or western China, and that in May it had been concluded that no major earthquakes would occur in the Beijing Tongshan area. As it turned out, western China was hit by the magnitude 7.2 Songpan Pingu earthquake only three weeks after Tongshan, showing that those arguing for the imminence of an earthquake in western China were not entirely wrong. At another meeting, on July 26, there was a purported suggestion to not issue any warning, to avoid alarming the population. The next morning, at an emergency meeting he requested with the Bureau's leadership, Wang was reportedly told by Deputy Chief Cha Ziyuan that, We are currently very busy. We will discuss it again next week. However, Cha has disputed this, claiming that Wang said there would be no major earthquakes. Another account says Wang was directed to submit more information, then send a small group to observe the earthquake. Some of the bureaucratic reticence to issue warnings and order precautionary measures likely resulted from too many predictions. These were often based on doubtful theories notorious for false alarms that earthquakes can be predicted on the basis of droughts, daily temperatures, variations in geomagnetism, or isolated anomalous phenomena. They were often too broad, magnitude of at least 4.0 in the area of Beijing, Tianjin, Wailai, Tongshan, Bohai, and Zhangjiakou in a few years, to warrant large-scale societal and economic disruption. Such disruptions could be serious. A false alarm in October, 1976, issued by the Shaanxi provincial government, is estimated to have disrupted the lives of 65% of the population of that province for half a year. It has also been estimated that in the fall of 1976 about 400 million of the then total population of 930 million of China spent some nights in temporary earthquake shelters. This illustrates the classic dilemma of earthquake prediction, increasing the sensitivity to the possibility of an earthquake, i.e., reducing the failure to predict, increases the number false alarms, which often has a significant cost. Topic. Comparison Comparison of the Tongshan death toll. Officially 242,419. With other earthquake disasters is problematical because of uncertainty in the statistics. For example, the 1556 Shaanxi earthquake estimated magnitude of approximately 8 is generally said to have been the deadliest earthquake disaster in history, with 830,000 deaths, based on Chinese historical records. However, a Chinese language source argues for only 530,000 deaths from the earthquake itself, with the larger number being the total reduction of population due to deaths from all causes, including exposure, disease, and famine, as well as people leaving the region due to economic collapse. Another Chinese source states without citing any sources that the 1556 earthquake killed only about 100,000 directly, with another 700,000 dying of disease. Depending on what basis is used, the Tongshan disaster can thus be considered as approximately one-third, one-half, or twice as deadly as the Shaanxi disaster. The other five deadliest earthquake disasters known in history, with magnitudes ranging from 7.0 to 9.1, have had death tolls just under that of Tongshan's. 
1138 Aleppo earthquake, Syria magnitude unknown, approximately 230,000 deaths. 2004 Sumatra earthquake, Indonesia M9.1, 227,898 deaths. 2010 Haiti earthquake M7.0, 222,570 deaths. 856 Damgan earthquake, Iran, magnitude unknown, approximately 200,000 deaths. 1920 Haiyuan, Gansu earthquake, China M7.8, approximately 200,000 deaths. Other notably deadly earthquakes in the past century include 1923 Great Kanto earthquake, Japan M7.9, 142,800 deaths, mostly due to fire. 1948 Ashgabat earthquake, Turkmenistan M7.3, 110,000 deaths. Although unprepared, compared to other earthquake disasters, Tongshan did not experience significant common secondary disasters arising from fire, tsunami, landsliding, or flooding due to blocking of rivers or breaching of dikes. A dam holding back a large reservoir just above Tongshan was seriously damaged but did not fail, similarly for another dam that imperiled Tianjin and some outlying districts of Beijing. The immediate and massive response by the government resulted in the rescue of thousands of people in the first two days, after which mortality increases rapidly, while prompt attention to the problems of clean water, food, and public health avoided the mortality due to epidemic disease and starvation that often follows such disasters. Topic. Cultural references Chinese director Feng Shaoging's 2010 film Aftershock gives a dramatic account about this tragic earthquake. See also 1975 Haichung earthquake 1976 Longling Earthquake, May 29 1976 Songpan Pingwu Earthquake, August 16–23 2008 Sichuan Earthquake, Great Wenchuan Earthquake List of earthquakes in 1976 List of earthquakes in China Topic Notes Topic Sources Topic Further reading Qian Gang The Great China Earthquake Beijing, Foreign Languages Press, 1989. ISBN 0835122271. James Palmer. Heaven Cracks, Earth Shakes, The Tongshan Earthquake and the Death of Mao's China. New York, New York, Basic Books, 2011. ISBN 978-0-465-01478-1 Hardcover ALK, Paper, 9780465023493 EBK, ALK. Paper. Report on the Great Tongshan Earthquake of 1976, English translation of an extensive Chinese report from 1986. <laughs> External links 
Integration of Public Administration and Earthquake Science, the Best Practice Case of Qinglong County, at globalwatch.org. The International Seismological Center has a bibliography and or authoritative data for this event. An isoseismal map showing the different zones of shaking intensity of the Tongshan earthquake can be found here.